Let's look at the assessment criteria then for fluency and coherence. And I've taken this from the official assessment criteria that is used by IELTS examiners. So I'm going to start by looking at band five. So what is your typical IELTS candidate who gets a band five doing in the IELTS speaking test? Well, they will usually maintain their flow of speech. So in all three parts, they'll keep on talking, but it's often very slow speech. And one of the ways that a band five candidate will maintain their flow of speech is by repeating themselves quite a lot and also by correcting themselves as well. At band five, a candidate can produce simple speech fluently, so simple sentences, but when it comes to using more complex language, their fluency tends to break down. This is particularly an issue in part three of the IELTS speaking test, where the language that a candidate is expected to use tends to be more complex. So this is where a band five candidate starts to have some difficulty. Band five students, they typically only give very short answers and they tend to say as little as they possibly can. So even though they keep on speaking, they won't go into that much detail. So for example, if the IELTS examiner asks a candidate, what are the causes of pollution in your hometown? A candidate at band five might say something like, the main causes are traffic and industry. Now that might be a perfectly good answer in the real world, but the IELTS speaking test isn't really the real world. You've got to show the examiner how good your English is. So you need to give extended answers. And if you don't give extended answers, then you're probably going to be around about band five. The best way to get above band five is to have a wide vocabulary. And this means a better level of general English. So you've got to try and get a wide vocabulary to get beyond band five. Something else that band five candidates will do is they will typically overuse connectives and discourse markers. Discourse markers is another phrase for cohesive devices. So they use too many of them, maybe one in every single sentence. So try not to overuse connectives. Something else students at band five will do a lot is they will hesitate a lot while they're speaking because they're very they're worried about making grammatical mistakes they want to be perfect with their grammar so that's often why students at band five sometimes band six as well speak slowly and hesitate because they're worried about their grammar so my advice actually is don't worry too much about grammar occasional mistakes are okay but if you hesitate too much your score for fluency and coherence will go down. Let's look at band six. We'll compare it to band five so you can see what you have to do to get from band five to band six. So at band six, the typical IELTS candidate is willing to speak at length. They want to speak at length. They try to speak at length, but there are signs of effort. It's, the IELTS examiner can see that it's difficult for them but they do keep on trying to, to keep talking. And at band six, a candidate may lose coherence at times. So the organisation, the structure of their ideas might start to fall apart at times. And this is often because they repeat themselves occasionally or they occasionally self-correct. So you can see the difference here between band five and six. So at band five, they're probably doing a lot of repeating, a lot of self-correction, but at band six, it's occasional repetition and correction. At band six, there will be occasional hesitation, only occasional though, so they're thinking about language, about grammar perhaps. And at band six, a candidate will 
use a range of connectives, but not always appropriately. So in other words, they will use roughly the right amount of connectives, not too many, but sometimes they will be inappropriate. This is where a student might use cohesive devices like Moreover or Nevertheless, which are too formal for, for, for an IELTS speaking test. So there's going to be some inappropriate use of cohesive devices there. So what about band seven? Let's look at band seven now for fluency and co coherence. So what's the difference here? Well, at band seven, a candidate speaks at length without noticeable effort. This is a big, big difference. So at band six, the IELTS examiner can detect signs of effort. But at band seven, the IELTS candidate will not notice the effort, the strain. So at band seven, a candidate is quite at ease with speaking for a long time, especially in part two. And there will also be no noticeable loss of coherence. So the structure of their ideas is maintained while they're speaking. This is partly because at band seven, candidates don't tend to repeat themselves as much. There can be some repetition and some self-correction, but it doesn't really affect the coherence of their ideas. There may be some hesitation. A band seven candidate may be trying to think of some language to include. So that's OK for band seven. You can hesitate a little bit when you're searching for vocabulary. But generally at band seven, your speech is more natural and smoother, more fluent because you're not constantly searching for words and phrases. In other words, having a wide vocabulary will help you get to a band score of seven or above for not just fluency and coherence, but also lexical resource which I'll look at later. Also, band seven candidates will use the discourse markers, the connectives, the cohesive devices, both accurately and also with some flexibility. Uh, in other words, they know the meaning and they only use connectives when it's absolutely necessary. And flexibility, it means that they're going to be Use them in a, in a natural and creative way. They're not just simply repeating words and phrases they've read in a book. They're actually using them in a natural, creative way. I look in more detail, actually, at flexibility when I look at lexical resource. So what about band eight? Well, at band eight, a candidate speaks fluently without effort. It's pretty easy for them to speak at length. There's no effort at all. It's easy. And they develop the topic in a coherent and very appropriate way. But even at band eight, they might repeat themselves or correct themselves. So you might hear a, an IELTS candidate at band eight. They may, might say the person which who so they correct themselves if they've used, for example, the wrong relative pronoun. Any hesitation is usually related to content, to ideas, and rarely for language. So you might still be th trying to think of words and phrases f of language to try and use the correct grammar, for, for example. But it's quite rare that they do that at band eight. And finally, they use a range of connectives with flexibility. So in a natural, creative way. And at band nine, well, if you want to get to band nine, what do you have to do to get to band nine for fluency and coherence? While they speak fluently, again, without effort, same as band eight, they develop their topics fully and appropriately. So particularly in part three, they will come up with some very full, quite detailed answers. 
even at band nine, you can repeat yourself or correct yourself a little bit, but it's rare, not occasional anymore. It's rare. And if there is hesitation, so again, at band nine, you can still hesitate, but the IELTS examiner needs to think that your hesitation is connected to ideas, to content and not language. If they think, if the IELTS examiner thinks you're hesitating to think about language, then they'll probably give you a band eight. But if they think, oh no, you're just trying to remember your ideas, then it's band nine. And finally, fully appropriate cohesion. So it's a very natural, very flexible cohesion. You're using a, a range of connectives and signposting language. Let's just recap then on how to get a band seven or above. What are the key things you need to be doing to get band seven or above? So here are my main tips. First of all, don't use too many connectives. You need to have a balance between helping your listener understand where you're going with your talks, with your speaking, and overusing them. So if you overuse, if you use too many connectives, you're only going to band, get a band five. And you also need to extend your answers. You need to stretch, even if it's a bit of an effort. I know at band five, often candidates don't want to say too much. But to get a band seven or above, you need to extend your answers. That's particularly the case in part three of the IELTS test. Obviously, you need to keep talking, especially in part two of the IELTS speaking test. And I also suggest that you don't worry about grammar, at least not too much, maybe a little bit. But one of the problems with students at band five and band six, they hesitate a lot because they're trying to make their grammar perfect. And that affects the band score for fluency and coherence quite a bit. So keep talking. Yes, you'll make a few mistakes, but actually even native speakers do that. Just try and focus on keeping talking. And finally, you need to develop a wide vocabulary. It's very, very difficult to get a band seven for speaking if you have a limited range of vocabulary. You need, in order to get a band seven, you need to be able to use a, a wide range in a flexible, natural way.